Turn in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. Two events occur in Revelation 7. Major events because the text shows us by the words it uses. It says there in verse 1, and after these things, and then in verse number 9, it says, after this. So those two textual indicators show that there are two events that are set off by this textual indicator that's given throughout the book of the Revelation to show its chronological sequence and its order, to show the individual units of the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ. We'll be looking at the outline for the book of the Revelation using these textual indicators uh, in the future. One of the future messages will just take a survey of the book of the Revelation showing its partial divisions through the, through the usage of this textual indicator that shows that there is a time factor happening after this, after these things. Here, the phrase after these things, after this, show number one, the sealing of the 144,000. It occurs between the sign of the day of the Lord that was given in Revelation 6, 12 through 17, that sign showing that the day of the Lord, God's wrath, is impending. The seventh seal has to be opened so that the scroll that contains the wrath of God can be seen but before that happens, God continues to prepare the earth for his second coming. And it shows the results of his second coming in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 through 17, as we look at the great multitude in heaven. Let's begin reading in verse 9. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations, and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sits upon the throne, and unto the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sits on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Verse 9 says there was a great multitude, which no man could number, and then it goes and proves that all of these are from all nations, kindreds, people, and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, robes and palms, in their hands, and then they give this great praise to God and to the Lamb, salvation unto our God, and they name all of these attributes of God in verse number 12. But here in this sequence, we are it shows that all of the attendants of heaven are there. This is a major event, all the angels, the four beasts. The 24 elders, the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father himself, all of the attendants and God himself and his son 
are present at this great event we'll call the Great Reception. This is when the Lord Jesus Christ receives the saints of the ages into heaven. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself. This is the fruit of God's second coming The Lord Jesus Christ will come in the clouds. He will redeem his saints. He will purchase them, first of all, through salvation. And then they will be fully redeemed when God takes them home to be with heaven. This, to be in heaven with him. He will receive them. And this is the great redemption being fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ as his saints now stand in heaven, the glorified saints of the ages, the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain, those who uh, endure the great tribulation, those who are alive at the point that Jesus comes, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, and so shall we meet the Lord in the air, and they'll ever be with the Lord." 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul's classic rapture passage. Here is the fruition of that rapture passage when the saints of the ages, as you can see here, all the attendants in heaven are there. The Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father is on the throne. So all of heaven has gathered for this grand reception that has just occurred as Jesus has raptured those who remained, those who are alive after the great persecution and the martyrdom of the saints during the great tribulation, shown in the fifth seal opening. There is the great tribulation. And then the sign of Jesus coming to judge, the sign of the day of the Lord. But before God's wrath falls, we are not appointed to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 9. And this is a picture, and this is the event in Scripture showing the saints of the ages. Look how they're described. They, they're they called a great multitude, no man could number. Then he uses four fully descriptive, four comprehensive words to show that these truly are the saints of the ages. How, in this short period of time, could people from every corner of the globe be saved? It says they came out of great tribulation, those which are alive, and the resurrected dead stand here in addition, showing that they are the saints from every corner of the globe. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them In the clouds, Jesus will come and he will redeem his men and women and children that have received him by faith. And so this is the fruition shown in heaven. And we'll go on and show you how that is supported, even though there are those who believe in theories of a pre-tribulation rapture and a mid-tribulation rapture. If that were the case, where are the saints, if they were raptured earlier, why are they not here to receive and to rejoice with the rest of heaven as the saints have been raptured out of the great tribulation? Where are the saints if they've been raptured earlier? They're not to be found in this passage. The only redeemed saints here are those who have just arrived out of great tribulation, which this passage clearly shows, showing that from every different corner of the globe described by nations, tongues, kindreds, peoples, all these descriptions are shown in order that we might realize that these truly are the resurrected saints of the ages and those who remained, those who were 
allowed to remain by the hand of God at the end of the great tribulation when he shortened it according to Matthew 24. The sequence here in Revelation 6 and 7 show the same sequence in Matthew 24, which we'll look at in our next message on the great multitude in heaven.